Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a bit about music. Uh, it's more about graphic design and it's about the iconic um, design style of Blue Note label. Um, so what's the Blue Note record label? It's a record label formed uh, way back in the 30s by Alfred Lyon and Francis Wolfe. Uh, they were German immigrants who came to America. They're also jazz enthusiasts, there they are. Francis Wolfe was also a professional photographer, so he's one of the key men. Um, Although they were founded in the 30s, things didn't really take off until the mid 50s. Everything we're looking at here is between the mid 50s and the mid 60s, at which point the label wound down. So the reason why they took off in the 50s is they were really at the vanguard of a new kind of sound. Uh, at this point, jazz had already been through a lot of stylistic variations, the most recent of which was bebop. This was a really rigorous technical kind of music. It was played by um, young black men who were determined to be seen as intellectuals and serious artists. So the music was very technical, a little bit elitist. Hard bop was more of a, a widening out of that. So it retained the key elements, but it also took on the influence of gospel, R&B, uh, blues. It relied a lot on minor key music, and it was also a little more moderate in terms of speed. Um, here are some of the pictures of Francis Wolfe. This is kind of the thing he's known for. Uh, a lot of the pictures he took were, in fact, taken during Blue Note recording sessions. So a lot of them are candid shots of the musicians between takes. They usually uh, smoke in, maybe taking notes, jotting things down. Uh, the other guy who's even more important is Reed Miles. This is what Reed Miles thought about jazz. He wasn't interested in it at all. But that may have been a benefit because it meant he had many conceptions of how jazz should look. What he was interested in was something called Swiss style graphic design. Uh, this is something that originated in the 40s. We can see some good examples here. Uh, the main characteristics were the use of negative space, lots of clean, simple Im imagery, geometric shapes. Uh, typography is used as a visual composition, compositional element itself. Uh, and the fonts that are favoured are very simple. Uh, so here we can see some of Reed's covers, um, and we can see a lot of that negative space straight away. You can see the colour scheme uh, as standard tends to be one vivid colour plus black and white, so a very limited palette. Interestingly, the pictures of the musicians are relatively small and they're all tucked away over one side or in a corner or in the typography somewhere. Uh, here's more examples of the way the typography is used as a compositional element. Uh, and the pictures of the musicians are getting even smaller now. You can see Joe Henderson is tucked away in the dot with the eye. Uh, and we've got things happening with the typography. Here's more of them. I, I like this JJ Johnson one. Uh, and it's funny because his, his name should be spelt with the initials JJ. And for some reason, they use the words JJ which always reminds me of the joke in The Simpsons where I was trying to find out what its middle initial J stands for and it ends standing for the word J. Here's some more of those geometric shapes. Um, again, the pictures of the musicians, they tend to be constrained quite small in those geometric shapes. There's a couple that don't have photographs in at all because they're slightly earlier ones. Uh, but these are good, all good examples of the, this kind of graphic design that the, the label is known for. So here's some examples of how the musicians could be quite small in the frame, even though the photos were large. Joe Henderson's right back in the corner there. Larry Young's dwarfed by a high-rise building. Uh, and Andrew Hill's made to look like a shadowy fugitive there. Um, and also sometimes they'd be hidden behind other objects. So you've got um, Herbie Hancock peeking out from behind his piano. Uh, Donald Bird is looking over the hood of a Big sports car. Sports car is nice because that also makes a really kind of geometric shape uh, in the foreground. Um, here's some examples uh, of another style they they had where Francis Wolfe photography is really in the front seat. And you can see the scheme here is you get a photograph of the musician and then you get that one color tint and normally with a white font as well. At this point, Reed Miles was really cranking these out. Um, at a cracking pace. He'd get paid $50 each and he'd sometimes do three of them a day. Sometimes he'd farm the work out to other young artists. These were done by young Andy Warhol. 
Uh, the one on the left is really interesting because he's treating Warhol's um, illustration the same way as he does the photographs in that he's really shoving it up into the corner so it's kind of cropped and then blocked negative space. Here's a couple of exceptions to the rule, which I thought would be nice to show, plus we get to look at a dog. Um, Blue Note was winding down around this time in the mid-60s. Uh, Reed Miles decided to move on. But even by then, uh, it's hard to underestimate uh, or rather overestimate how influential this style was. Um, here's some uh, record covers from three of the other main jazz labels at that time. You, you, you can kind of see see where the, the elements have been copied. The Oliver Nelson one I actually thought was a Reed Miles one, and I was really shocked when I found out that that was someone else. Here's a modern example showing how this style is still influ influential. The Noam Chomsky one I think is from the mid 90s, and all the others are a much more modern. Uh, Aesop Rock is an underground hip hop artist. I think Sky Zoo and Dunbar Station. They're hip hoppers. There's a Barack Obama which, one, which is fun. Uh, finally, we get to a video game. This is Ape Out, which you can see uses the same style. All the levels in Ape Out are kind of sectioned as albums. You can see the high rise one has the fun little picture of Gorilla in, in the bottom of the geometric shape, which is nice. Uh, and one of the way Blue Note was really influential in the way it worked was it showed the benefits of kind of having a house style for album covers, which a lot of jazz labels have covered since. For instance, European label ECM, which is really successful, you can see their album covers are all of a piece. They very often show uh, scenes of nature, uh, really muted colours and really um, sparse typography. Um, and what they're really saying to the listener is, if you like one of these, you're going to like all the others as well. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>